Kitten will need to stay on to provide details for us after the event or email us his or her contact details. Okay, before we begin, as a program chairperson of SPE Kuala Lumpur, I would like to highlight uh, that most of our, our activities has been made free of charge to all members since 2017. However, we do get small rebate from your membership, which counts on making events like this free. Therefore, please make sure that your SPE membership stays active by renewing your membership via www.spe.com forward slash en forward slash, uh, forward slash join. For 2021, the membership fees has been reduced. Uh, and if you have unfortunately lost your job and in transition, SPE allows free renewal for up to two years. Most oil and gas companies in Malaysia approve SPE as one of their professional membership bodies and allows the membership fees to be claimable. Just make sure that your support goes a long way making events like this sustainable. Uh, now let's move on to the topic for today, sampling while drilling past, present and future. Okay. Over the last few years, sampling while drilling is an obvious choice for specific well scenario. However, the technology has been treated as somewhat new in the industry despite being reasonably mature. The evolution for this technology and its present capability needs a critique so that it will enhance future application. Lesson learned and best practices need to be shared with a wider audience to make it more acceptable and help realize the value. The entire work for workflow from pre-job planning, selecting a particular technology to real-time monitoring and post-job analysis are uniquely tied together with various technical experience, but it still needs to be made more harmonious. With so many new technical developments, this subject need a broader share to assimilate the value of information, save costs and deliver efficient operation. It is expected that the interactive discussion on this topic will encourage operators to consider this technology not in isolation, but as an aid to optimize their operations and put forward cases that allow continued innovation by technology providers. I would like to welcome Mr. Nikhil Hadika to present his uh, lecture on his talk. Okay, thank you, Rose. If you're ready, um, yeah, so let me stop sharing. All right. So thank you very much, Rose uh, <clears throat> and Society of Petroleum Engineers Kuala Lumpur section. Uh, without further ado, um, we will straight away start the slideshow because I, what I'm really looking forward to is the, the Q&A, interactive Q&A and the quiz and feedback. Uh, so we have a lot of young professionals also joining in. So basically uh, the topic sampling while drilling past, present, future, uh, what I've tried to do in a set of 32 slides is uh, uh, give you an overall uh, picture of what has happened in the past, what's happening currently and uh, what the future might look like. Uh, and it's really the contribution of everybody uh, that will probably uh, shape up uh, the future and improve the present. So uh, a few notes uh, and a disclaimer. Uh, basically, the session is being recorded and um, uh, if you are individually recording it, uh, please don't distribute in any form of social media. SPEKL will uh, officially send the recording and the slide back. Uh, another aspect that I would like to point out here is um, all the applications capabilities of this technology. Uh, that will be presented, uh, they are an overall industry uh, available, maximum, minimum, and it's not uh, focused at any individual company. Uh, that is my duty as an independent consultant. So uh, uh, on the agenda, the right hand side, you can uh, basically see what fluid characterization and testing while drilling, which is uh, uh, 
uh, short scoped to be um, sampling while drilling. What it means is basically uh, all the bullet points mean eventually that whatever you could do with wireline, you can do uh, on LWD, uh, if not everything, but most of it. So that's what it means. Uh, so the, the YP group uh, has, has, a, has a good start, uh, so they know what it is about. Now, uh, for the past, we are going to go through the introduction of this technology, the need uh, for us to adopt to this technology, uh, expectations and reality, uh, which is very important. In the present, we'll deep dive into uh, technical details, uh, the always awaited comparison with wireline, and then uh, a bit more technical into pre-job planning and uh, the much awaited case studies. And then in conclusion, we'll uh, set out some key pointers that every operator or every service company consultant uh, should uh, be aware of uh, while dealing with this stuff. And in the future, uh, what's, what's the technology development that is eagerly awaited, uh, like the, the, the first thing that you want to have, and then there is a wish list that all the things that you want to have. So that's the rough scope of how we have planned uh, this talk today. Now, to begin with, uh, why does the industry require this technology application? Well, to begin with, uh, sample early, you know, take advantage of low invasion, uh, try to reduce the cleanup time, which eventually uh, resolves uh, your rig time. That is something of an of a, of a expectation uh, sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't happen because of various conditions secondly uh, you uh, have yeah uh, does somebody say anything sorry okay uh, secondly we have uh, easier access to reservoirs in geometrically challenging wells it's basically horizontal wells, complicated S profile wells, extended reach wells. Uh, in some of the cases, wireline is still applicable, but when you have something on pipe, why not go for it? Because it's available. Uh, pressure testing and sampling in total mud losses, so carbonates, and you get into pressurized mud cap drilling. There are case studies where wireline has delivered the results, uh, but when you have a pressurized mud cap scenario, I think uh, it is uh, most appropriate to go with sampling while drilling. Uh, we have a very good case study from Malaysia uh, and we will, we will get to there. Reduced risk of stuck tools. So stuck tools has always been a problem even in vertical wells, uh, S profile wells, J profile wells, all kinds of challenging wells. Uh, but there's this aspect of continuous circulation during the sampling while drilling operations that has uh, practically shown that there's uh, almost zero risk of uh, stuck tools. Then uh, deep water. So uh, we can use sampling while drilling as a as an aid to wireline. If the deep water, which generally has a very heavy duty wireline program, uh, and there's almost always uh, formation pressure while drilling. So if we can just replace the traditional formation pressure while drilling by formation pressure and sampling while drilling, during your pressure testing itself, you can do a fluid scan. If you don't want to uh, have a very uh, big uh, bottom hole assembly, there's no need to go with sample tanks. You can just go with the pressure and the fluid analyzer, which will help you fine tune your wireline program, perhaps reduce the intensity of that program uh, and at times just uh, not go for it. So there are cases where this has happened. Uh, and mind you, like this is not a this is not a uh, challenge to wireline uh, in no way it can be. But it's just that uh, the technology has evolved to a certain extent that we can take advantage of all these advancements. You know? So it's like uh, try to complement each other and decide in terms of cost effectiveness or a proper technical application as to whether to go ahead with it or not go ahead with it. Marginal fields. Now, uh, there are cost savings. Uh, we have multiple case studies in our industry where uh, the marginal field operators have straight away uh, gone in their appraisal or development scenarios with sampling while drilling. Not only did they get the pressure data, 
but they could optimize their resource. You know, they, the resource assessment can be optimized by PVT quality samples. Uh, so it's not like you have a PVT report which is 15 years old and uh, all the simulation is based on that. You have uh, testing which is carried out in production facilities, but uh, I, I still believe there's no replacement to a in situ sample. Uh, and if you do it progressively, you will find that it adds value as well. So wherever there are uh, claims of numbers and uh, other things, I have given the appropriate uh, SPE, OTC or EAG reference. So when you get the recording or when you get the slides, uh, please go uh, to those papers and see for uh, better details. Uh, now in terms of availability, so currently in our industry, uh, there are three service providers, as you can see, uh, and uh, they have been providing this service. Uh, in terms of tool and manpower availability, obviously it is not as routine as wireline. Uh, you have your standard MWD, LWD crew, but you need special engineers. So just like in wireline uh, for focus sampling, for example, you need uh, some special engineers. In today's time uh, where we have uh, kind of, you know, uh, logging from office or remote logging, uh, then perhaps you can now optimize your manpower. If the operator is ready for it, they can choose to have one engineer instead of two engineers and the other engineer can control from the office. That's available today. Uh, enhanced planning efforts are required because what has happened is despite this technology being uh, like a decade old, more than a decade old, it comes under the classification of new technology. So obviously the preparation, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, conceptualization, everything uh, is, is kind of treated as new. So uh, you would require to spend some more efforts than you would normally do on a wireline job. Uh, so that's that's there. Now to break the ice, uh, I just want to introduce you to the timeline. So when did this technology come to our industry? Well, it's as early as 2008 actually. And uh, probably it was too early for the industry and uh, there was a limited adoption of this technology. Uh, however, uh, relentless efforts uh, from operators as well as the, the technology providers uh, resulted in uh, further testing, improvement, uh, more field trials, uh, and uh, it come, came to a commercial scale uh, in 2014, uh, as far as I know. Uh, so it's been around in our industry for more than a decade, so 13 plus years. Uh, and uh, why it has sometimes it doesn't become very popular is who will be the guinea pig? I mean, who will use this for the first time? So uh, you will always have, uh, you know, limitations, but then somebody does come and use it for the first time and takes the first advantage. So uh, there is sort of a courage involved in all of this uh, with practicality. Now, uh, concerns, so a lot of concerns. So let's say we, we go to the drilling and the well engineering portfolios. So whether to do the sampling really during drilling or should we drill to TD first and then do it in a mad pass, which is a measurement after drilling pass. Uh, well, many times, you know, what happens is <clears throat> the operator feels that uh, our first objective is to drill the well. So let's drill to section TD. Uh, this this uh, technology uh, is available in the drill string and let's use it uh, after we have drilled. So it's still OK. It's still earlier than wireline because it's already there in the BHA, but uh, probably you have lost its best application, which is to stop drilling, do the pressure test or fluid analysis sample and then proceed with the drilling. So really depends on how you want it, how you spread the risk. Then uh, should we go for a dedicated run? So sometimes you would want to remove the nukes from the LWD and then going going in with uh, uh, only sampling while drilling assembly. So depending on uh, the conditions. And then uh, what's the stationary time on wall? How much time it will take for cleanup? Well, uh, obviously this is going to be dependent on multiple things and we'll we'll get into that because that's probably the first question everybody always asks irrespective of LWD or wireline. Uh, 
And then, uh, okay, you have a new technology, it looks expensive. Uh, so what's the lost in hope? That's another question. Then there are concerns from subsurface portfolio. So do we have the adequate devices like the probes, the pads, the packers, as you call it? Uh, will it suit the different types of formations that we might encounter? So it's a, like a question during pre-job planning stage. And then uh, what about the real time fluid uh, monitoring uh, parameters? You know, what are the limits? Because we are in LWD condition. So what are the telemetry limits? Is there a problem? Will we be able to see everything? So yes, that's a concern. And then uh, you, have uh, you, have, you have we have formation pressure measurement. And uh, but can we do the sampling with flow on and flow off? So uh, typically a flow on flow off conditions become very important uh, for low mobility scenarios, you know, uh, tight formations, tighter formations uh, makes a big difference when if it's flow on and flow off. So we'll, we're all going to see how this will uh, come about. And that's how typically the discussion begins. You know. And uh, at the outset, uh, what do we expect? Like, um, uh, can can this tool be run in all the hole sizes that we have? Well, this becomes a region dependent issue. Uh, mostly, it's the eight and a half inch hole, so one would expect a six, three, four inch tool to uh, do the job. And there are other regions globally where you have 12 quarter as as the main hole and uh, many times it's the six inch which is the primary reservoir section so uh, is it as good as wireline formation testing tools so about the choice of packers the fluid analyzer sample volume sample bottles you know quantity uh, effectiveness uh, what about the tool inertness? You know, is it is it the same like wireline, uh, less susceptible to uh, H2S, uh, CO2, uh, mercury, like the non hydrocarbon contaminants? Uh, telemetry uh, is focus sampling available, not available, and do we have the the pump up and pump down capability? Well, basically, the pump up is when uh, when your probe sucks the fluid, your uh, flow is going to go up. The tool so that is pump up and then you have your fluid analyzer then the sample tax you know so the flow is always from down to up and pump down as you can imagine is exactly the reverse so all fluids are flowing down basically so uh, the pump is pumping it down and then you have the fluid analyzer and the tanks so there are distinct advantages and disadvantages of that uh, hydrocarbons being lighter one would imagine that you would always try to pump up but uh, we have seen uh, fluid analyzers uh, perform a bit better, uh, especially with gas as, as a predominant flowing fluid in pump down because it's easier for the mud and the filtrate to flush down by gravity uh, and it helps. But then you need a bigger rat hole because all your devices are below this probe. So various aspects and a lot of operators uh, after discussion will consider a particular uh, choice. Then when we come to the reality that, OK, in terms of tool size today, we have a six, three, four inch OD tool. It addresses uh, eight and a half inch from eight and a half inch to 10, five eighths hole size. It can be run in larger hole sizes like up to 12 quarter under specialized circumstances. But currently, uh, as per industry knowledge, we don't have a tool for six inch currently. And is it as good as wireline? Uh, well, there is a choice of packers, uh, typically uh, uh, four categories in general, uh, and it is suited to, you know, like the generic uh, high mobility stuff, then low mobility, loose unconsolidated formation and abrasive formation. So you have a standard packer, you have an elongated, you have an oval shaped packer, and I'm going to show uh, some pictures as well. Uh, the large diameter packer, large surface area, uh, and then you have uh, another version of uh, this, uh, the enhanced surface area. In terms of fluid analyzer, I can say yes, it is as good as wireline. Uh, no problem on that uh, because all of this has come from wireline. It's just that instead of uh, having that cylinder on a piece of wire, uh, you have to fit this into a drill string, VHA. 
uh, and that has its own challenges for vibration and stuff. So the technology providers have done their job. Now, in terms of sample volume, uh, currently uh, industry maxima, it's limited to 16 bottles, uh, about 13 plus liters. Uh, compared to wireline, it can go as to 52 bottles. So that's something uh, where LWD is yet to get to, but 16 is not a bad number. Um, in terms of sample bottles themselves, it's good that mostly it is very similar or even interchangeable with wireline. So it's an excellent opportunity during deep water, you know, uh, because if it's going to be one pull out, which could be a long time consuming thing, you can, you, and if you go from LWD to wireline, then you can still use the unused tanks, or you can just have a, one set of tanks which can be used for either of the applications. Uh, in terms of tool inertness, yes, uh, because it comes from wireline, it has the same uh, you know, characteristics. Telemetry. Now, this is through mud pulse telemetry. Uh, if you have a wired pipe, it will be as good as wireline, but generally it's mud pulse telemetry, and so it is within the logging while drilling limits. Uh, so even with 6 to 8 up to 12 bits per second, you can uh, basically monitor the job. There is no problem. Uh, you, we know that, I mean, wireline is like 250,000 bits per second. So, but if this was wired pipe, it will come down to the same level. Uh, we don't have the focus sampling, sampling capability yet. And uh, we only have pump up capability as of now. So we are getting there. Then uh, what about, let, let's say we go into the real stuff uh, of, you know, uh, narrowing it down. Uh, so what about the pressure gauge and the data sampling rate? Well, the gauges are basically same as wireline. Uh, so it's quartz, at times it's even better. Uh, and the sampling rate, the data sampling rate is basically the same as wireline. The only thing is what is displayed during real time is uh, a bit condensed because of the LWD telemetry limits. Uh, in terms of the pump, because at the heart of pressure testing and sampling, it's the it's the pump in the tool, and uh, it uses uh, electromechanical pump, so which is like a, you know uh, progressing cavity, not not sorry, uh, positive displacement type of pump. And what it enables us to do is actually instead of hydraulics, uh, this uses electromechanical uh, stuff. So you actually get more accurate drawdown or flow rate control, and that becomes a very useful input to your mobility calculation. So uh, there is an added advantage. And uh, what about power and memory. So, uh, you know, as of today, the memory is, is really big. It's much more than the traditional formation pressure while drilling because it has to store uh, fluid analyzer data as well. And, and going beyond that, even if you do a probe based mini DST with multiple drawdowns and buildups, uh, it can store uh, equivalent of a mini DST data for multiple stations. So uh, it has got good memory. And uh, the pressure testing can be carried out uh, in pumps off or pumps on mode. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the sampling, you will require uh, the rig pumps to be switched on. So you will need the pumps on mode uh, for the cleanup and sampling. In terms of the fluid analyzer, uh, okay, we have this flexibility to have, just like in wireline, the fluid analyzer before or after the pump. And uh, when it's before the pump, basically uh, you can detect uh, if you have reached your saturation point earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, it also, it's also helpful because your sensors are in a less turbulent flow regime. You are in a much more smoothened out, quiet zone because it's before the pump. And then if you have it on the discharge side of the pump, which is after the pump, uh, well, it, it'll, it'll, it is what traditionally we have in uh, wireline most of the times. Uh, but then you have this advantage to be able to detect slug flow. So uh, uh, what's going to what's going to happen is the the segregation of fluids slugs, whether it's water or gas or water or oil, uh, you know, it's going to happen in the pump. So uh, for you to see this slug, your fluid analyzer has to be after the pump. 
Uh, that's one way of looking at it, right? Uh, then you can have all the petrophysical sensors below the tool. So it's like a full suite log interpretation can be done before finalizing your pressure points and uh, fluid ID uh, and sampling points. So that is also possible. Um, the tool string will get lengthier based on that. Uh, and uh, this is complete automated closed loop control. So uh, you can still manually intervene uh, because it is uh, it is like you know downlinking a set of parameters from the surface computer. Uh, the tool accepts this command, executes this command, and then tells you that yes, I have done it. So that's the MWD uh, telemetry talk. But uh, if you feel like okay, I should change flow rate, I should change this, I should change that, I should stop, I should sample now. All of this can be possible by downlinking commands and, and through mud pulse telemetry, the, uh, the system will execute it. So uh, <clears throat> we just have two typical bottom hole assemblies. Uh, so if you are going to do this during drilling uh, uh, or you have it in the assembly, you have drilled to TD and then you can do it. So typically with the basic basic sensor data like you know gamma resistivity directional uh, density neutron uh, and uh, poro i mean uh, porosity or uh, basic stuff uh, the offset is about 30 meters it's more or less 30 meters and if you're going to do it in a mad pass you know or, or a dedicated uh, run uh, you can reduce this offset uh, to 17 meters, sorry, not the mat pass in a dedicated run. So which is after drilling, you pull out the BHA and then you go only with uh, this BHA, which is having only resistivity gamma. That's for your correlation and you have your uh, pressure testing and sampling module. So so you don't have the nukes as well, if that's a concern. Uh, so that is basically a dedicated run. So that's after drilling. And you can reduce this offset to about 70, 20 meters. And these are two typical sketches that I found uh, on in published data. So on the left hand side, you have a, a, a tool sketch where uh, you have fluid analyzers on both sides of the pump, which is a huge advantage, I would say. Uh, and on the second, uh, you have a little bit more details on uh, sample tanks and uh, you know uh, the ceiling element and uh, so here you will notice that there's there's one pump one pump it caters to uh, your pressure testing uh, and the same pump caters to your fluid id and sampling so basically clean up and sampling so so it's it's like one pump uh, for it all in wireline you have the flexibility of having uh, multiple pumps here it is all done through one pump as of now. So these are the different uh, devices, as I call it, you know, probe, pad, packer. So you have a oval uh, pad, uh, which is a high flow area. Then you have the elongated probe, which is again another high flow area. So, and the circular one again with the high flow area. So on the left hand side, basically you will see that they're all uh, very much suited to low mobility formations. And then you have a standard circular type of packer, which is good in any condition uh, other than very much low mobility. Uh, and then you have a rectangular shaped packer, which has a same flow area like, like the uh, standard or circular packer, but it has a larger surface area. So flow area is same, surface area is more. And uh, typically, uh, it is good for the loose unconsolidated formations because it has more rubber. You can grip the formation in a better way. And uh, you have a circular packer, which again has the same um, flow area like a standard packer. Uh, but you see uh, there is a metal ring which uh, surrounds uh, this packer. So let me um, show this one. So there is a metal ring which is uh, surrounding this rubber. So for abrasive formations, uh, because many times you are going to uh, do this sampling after a lot of drilling. So, so the, this rubber is going to get exposed to all the drilling, drilling mud all the time during drilling. 
and uh, sometimes uh, you might damage the packer. So you, uh, there are uh, there is a possibility to have a metal casing around it. Uh, very helpful at times. So these are, I mean, the types of packers because there is no focus sampling. So obviously it is uh, limited. But I think this is a good enough choice uh, that we have in the industry today, and we should make use of it. Now we come to the fluid analysis, the downhole fluid analysis. So uh, in part A, uh, basically what we can do, let's first go to the measurements, the, the real time measurements. So you can measure pressure, temperature. Uh, sometimes there's a facility to have temperature differential. Temperature differential is nothing but there is a heat source uh, in, in, the, in the tool. And when fluids pass over it, uh, there is a thermal exchange, there is an enthalpy exchange, and uh, the difference between that can tell you, uh, can hint you as to what type of fluid is flowing. Then uh, we have the optical spectrometer, so it is same as uh, your wireline. You have uh, spectra in the visible range, in the near infrared range, and uh, you have another spectrometer which uses the ultraviolet light. Uh, so you have uh, fluorescence basically from that. Then you have a downhole chromatograph as the industry calls it, you know, so for your compositional measurements, uh, C1C2 uh, right up to C6 plus and carbon dioxide. Then you have uh, measurements of real time density, viscosity and sound speed. Sound speed is like fluid slowness. Uh, then uh, fluid compressibility. Uh, continuous uh, cleanup mobility. So generally what happens is when you measure uh, uh, pressure, uh, obviously there's a immediate calculation of mobility during your pressure testing. But uh, today what we can do is uh, as the pump completes each cycle at the end of it, uh, because we know uh, the volume that was moved uh, thanks to some clever arrangement of uh, a set of uh, valves, uh, you can actually get good compressibility and continuous mobility reading. So it's a mobility also comes in a curve. You know, so you will see if uh, if you are actually cleaning up, then your mobility should eventually go up because you're you know you're getting more and more clean. Uh, that's one indication. Or if you have a heavier fluid flowing, this mobility will drop. If you have gas, this mobility will increase very drastically. So those kind of uh, help aids are available today. Then you have a refractometer, which gives you refractive index. Then you have fluid resistivity and capacitance, like in the traditional wireline. Uh, and <clears throat> there's always a option to do a downhole PVT test. So once you have cleaned up uh, and sampled, you can actually measure your final build up pressure. And at the same time, you can do a downhole phase separation test, so uh, which is available in wireline as well. Then we come to the calculations, the computations through uh, there are like uh, industry accepted correlations and there are uh, correlations coupled with some patented uh, uh, you know, calculations. So they go hand in hand. And what we get is we get dominant fluid fractions, mud filtrate contamination, uh, based on which you decide to sample generally, uh, then your gas oil ratio or uh, condensate gas ratio, uh, which is the reciprocal of GOR, and then you get carbon dioxide weight percentage, and you can also get salinity from uh, refractive index and sound speed density combination. So multiple things are possible in downhole fluid, fluid analysis. Uh, very similar to what we do in wireline on a daily basis. Then we come to uh, the part B where you have uh, the non hydrocarbon contaminants. So obviously H2S and uh, uh, in terms of tool inertness, this is the same as wireline. So the critical tool components, the pumps, the flow lines, the sample tanks, all of it is made from H2S resistant uh, alloys. Uh, so it's it's the same as wireline and H2S coupons are also available. Uh, you can place them in the tanks. You can have them at the probe inlet and they can give you a qualitative indication of the H2S levels when you are back at surface. 
and uh, the sample tanks themselves, uh, they are made of inert material, but should you want to coat them with special uh, inert uh, substances, you can. Uh, and uh, inside the sample tanks, there are mixing balls, you know, to, to kind of uh, mix the, the fluid and make it more homogeneous. That's like rocking the sample bottle at the surface. Uh, to make the mixture more homogeneous. You can remove the mixing balls or as of today, you have uh, titanium mixing balls. So you have uh, H2S resistant material for the mixing balls as well. In terms of CO2, uh, just one point I want to make is, you know, your uh, the elastomer or the rubber element of the packer, uh, the damage is likely to occur there first if it's very high CO2. And you will notice this when you start getting seal failures and uh, perhaps when you take the probe to the surface, you will see that it's completely washed out or you know eroded or being cut, eaten by that carbon dioxide. Uh, mercury is very critical. Uh, as of today, it remains the biggest challenge and uh, various operator service company alliances exist. Uh, I hope they carry out, they continue to carry out this testing uh, in the lab because uh, mercury is, you know, it escapes everything. So its quantity is very less. As you produce, it comes more and more. So to determine uh, what it is in C2, uh, you really have to coat everything, uh, all kinds of things from downhole to surface. By surface, I mean not only the rig, but also the transportation and right to the lab, all laboratory equipment. So it's a, it's a big, big challenge because one chance mercury gets, it'll escape. And there are some uh, uh, unique um, uh, things that of mercury and it escapes even in the most of the surprising situations. So um, we have to still deal with mercury and it's true for wireline as well. Then uh, just summing up up to like you know general recommendations. So so at the end, okay, sampling while drilling, it's proven to be better than wireline in numerous conditions, if not all, in many conditions. Uh, many times, as we have discussed, you know, drilling to target depth is the first objective, and uh, hence the pressure testing and sampling uh, happens you know after drilling, right? It does impact the cleanup time, uh, so that's what we need to be wary about. And uh, if you have an under reaming plan, then uh, I think sampling while drilling is most helpful. You need it basically. Overbalance. Now, uh, lower the better. That's the simple key. You know, uh, we have to reduce supercharging. Um, you can turn the pumps off, uh, which which will aid the pressure testing. Then the uh, mud fluid loss, the API mud fluid loss. So uh, the lower, the better. Again, you know, uh, it helps to reduce the supercharging, especially in the LWD environment. And typically for oil-based muds, it's lower than the water-based muds uh, because of the inherent, uh, you know, duties each has to perform and uh, the base that they use, synthetic oil and uh, water. Uh, at times, the real-time density image uh, helps because you can then uh, orient your probe accordingly. So this is one advantage that LWD gives us that you can orient your probe to any quadrant that you want. You know, uh, so uh, that's one advantage, and we will we'll see its application in one of the case studies. Uh, it's related to also geomechanics model updates. So again, if you are using real-time geomechanics, then you have a pre-job model and then you can update it continuously. It's very useful for deciding the orientation of the packer again. Uh, and you can also get some advantage of uh, knowing your critical drawdown pressure. So especially in loose unconsolidated formation, uh, when you don't want it to sand, uh, it is of help. Again, uh, there is a case study where we will uh, look at it and always we should avoid unnecessary back reaming and wiper trips. We feel sometimes that uh, back reaming is helpful. Yes, it is helpful at times. Uh, wiper trips are helpful at times, but if it's really not necessary, actually 
uh, you're doing more damage than help. So uh, that's something which we have learned from experience. Pre-job planning, super critical. Uh, my personal favorite. So modeling, now modeling can be empirical, numerical, it could be both. And its job is to predict cleanup volume and time to get a clean sample, say less than five uh, weight percent of mud filtrate. And then you can run various sensitivities of, you know, thickness, uh, where you place the probe, you know, is it at the bottom of a boundary or it is in the middle of the section? Where is it? Uh, then uh, it helps to select the pump capacity. So uh, you need to know th that the pump basically takes care of the highest pressure that you're going to encounter uh, and also the highest overbalance. And based on that, you can have enough drawdown capacity, which is the same as the overpressure capacity of the pump. And then you can uh, calculate properly your uh, nitrogen or helium surface pre-charge. Uh, this is for the single phase samples. So traditionally we use uh, uh, nitrogen all the time, but there are times when helium is also used. So helium is more stiff and uh, it has proved to be very helpful in very high pressure scenarios. So what you get from nitrogen, you will get much more from helium. Uh, so uh, you can still have a lower pump. Uh, you can optimize your sample volume uh, because this charging media, the more you charge, the less opening pressure you get at the surface, the less volume you get. So if you replace this nitrogen with helium, you can actually, without changing your uh, charge pressure, you can uh, try to see if you get more volume or more opening pressure. So your single phase sample is even more secure. Then uh, geomechanics inputs for the CDP, the critical drawdown pressure, as we said, you know, sand free flowing pressure. Uh, particle size distribution, very important. Uh, LCM, you know, all, all of this um, in the pre-job planning, we need a good discussion on this uh, so that uh, there are various filters or screens, you know, uh, around the probe. Uh, so we don't want to get plugged at the probe itself. You know. Uh, so this discussion needs to happen. Uh, many times we do get plugged. It is where it is always possible because of the reverse circulation capability. It's possible to get rid of plugging at the probe. But now if these fines migrate into your pumps and other internals, that's actually a bigger challenge. Uh, and there are facilities to get rid of that as well. So uh, we have some advancement. And then uh, the bottom hole assembly, how many stabilizers that you need to add. So the well engineering uh, people will pay attention to it. Application engineers will pay attention to it. So all in all, these are the salient points uh, of a, of a pre-job uh, plan. Um, then uh, this is an example of a, a empirical simulation. So basically all what it says is um, uh, how the curves will behave, you know, so you have um, oil-based mud and gas. So you can see uh, instantly that your um, uh, compressibility is going to increase drastically. You know, uh, your density is going to fall, right? Your acoustic transit time, which is your slowness, is going to go very high. Um, so those kind of immediate uh, things you can know from a simulation. So it's just one example of the various types of simulation possible. And then this also is very important. This is a decision tree. So which we uh, have for every sampling plan, you know, uh, what's your target? How does one proceed? Uh, whether it's a good result, then you have a decision and you say yes or no to it. So it's, it's a typical plan. Uh, in today's internet era, uh, we rarely see connectivity issues, but uh, there have been issues in the past where, uh, you know, there is there has to be uh, a, a decision tree available with the engineer and the operator's representative uh, so that they are exactly on the same page. And if by any chance there's uh, no communication with the town, 
then at least they they are going by a certain uh, guideline so it's always helpful to have it then these are some useful plots so during pre job planning it is always good to read a few papers and you know depending on the situation you are going to expect uh, there's a lot of reading material available you should make your own notes have those graphs uh, in a in a in one uh, uh, slide set distribute with all your colleagues so that everybody is aware that you know what is helpful what is not helpful so here you can see you know contamination versus time after drilling so instantly you see that as the elapsed time increases the mud filtrate contamination increases so at least it's good to know that okay, what what kind of time are we looking at and then in your uh, simulation you can see uh, you can actually do a empirical get it from empirical or do a numerical to see uh, what you can expect and then uh, so again there is the same uh, example uh, you know uh, for contamination versus time after drilling and you see uh, two days after drilling five hours after drilling you know so it's it it varies it varies uh, the right hand side example is obviously filtrate and formation water so you know these are always useful plots which you should remember there are so many of them so at least depending on the situation you should study the right plot So here again, we have shown one um, uh, example from SP paper. So here you can see, you know, um, the early sample is like um, 69 liters pumped in six and a half hours. The late sample is like after 43 hours and you en ended up uh, pumping 120 liters. Uh, and then the early sample resulted in 5% OBM filtrate contamination as opposed to the 10% OBM filtrate contamination. So in many scenarios, uh, this happens. So uh, that's where I said, like, you know, if your objective is to drill first and then do this in the measurement after drilling, you might end up in this situation. Uh, but uh, if if uh, you go in straight away with halting the drilling and proceeding with the plan, uh, you might you might get help from this. It's not always, but most of the times. Then you have uh, some comparisons, you know, uh, laboratory versus real time. So here you have, uh, I've shown example for uh, refractive index and density. And here you can see it is a, a reasonable match. It is uh, not that bad. Uh, and I'll show some more examples of uh, laboratory versus uh, real time comparisons. Visualization, so, you know, during the real time monitoring, there are so many uh, types of visualizations available as of today because the interface is really flexible. It really depends on what you are used to and how you want to see what's comfortable with the team or an individual. Uh, because everybody has a login ID, you can you can basically adjust the way you want. So here is a simple example where you have a mud flag uh, at the start in brown color, then uh, basically you have uh, 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 water-based mud coming in, and then it slowly turns from uh, the blue to green where the oil starts coming in. And then uh, at the end of it, when you stop the pump, you're about 95% oil fraction. So uh, you are good for sampling. So various types of uh, visualizations are possible. I've just shown one. OK, now uh, again, this is example water based mud and gas, and uh, it's a case of very high invasion, you know. Uh, so basically the elapsed time is between two to nine days. So like you couldn't hope for anything worse than that. Uh, and then it resulted in high pump volume. Uh, but if you are in a high mobility zone, effectively you will get more gas into the sample tank. So it's just an example showing that. You know. Then this is the case which we were talking about uh, from an SP paper. It's oil-based oil mud and oil. 
and uh, you have a pre-drill geomechanics plot of uh, the sanding risk, you know. So this is what has been done during pre-job modeling, and that's what they expect. Uh, and then when you basically uh, get your pressure data, you can update this model. After each pressure, you can update this model and improve upon this and find out the new uh, critical drawdown pressure. And at the same time, you can also see uh, where you orient the probe, in which quadrant you orient the probe uh, so that it's a safe drawdown basically. And uh, over here, the critical drawdown pressure was uh, like as uh, low as 50 PSI. Uh, but thankfully, this uh, turned out to be a, a reasonably good uh, permeability case. So there was no need to even exceed 50 PSI. So all samples were achieved in less than 50 PSI drawdown, ended up with less than 5% OBM contamination. So I think it, it did its job but very helpful uh, to have real-time geomechanics. It's uh, the next one is an example of low mobility, like 1.8. Uh, it's a horizontal well. Uh, pumping rate is less than one cc per second. So obviously you can imagine the sample was very critical to the operator and they didn't mind uh, spending the time. So as you can see, you know, nine and a half hours and uh, after that also uh, we have trace oil. So, uh, but there is oil. That's what was there. Many times, you know, uh, you forget the contamination, but many times you just want to prove that there is hydrocarbon in the sample tank. So this is like a case of that. And uh, here you can see apparent and effective pump rate. So the dark, the dark part that you see is the uh, effective pump rate. And the higher ones up and down that you see is the apparent rate. So when you say rate, what is it? Is it the rate of the pump? Is it the rate of the formation? What rate is it? Well, it is generally it is the rate of the pump. When you say you're flowing at X, Y, Z cc's per second, you're actually it's the pump that is operating at that rate. However, if you have compressibility, if you can account for compressibility, then you can get your reservoir formation fluid flow rate or whatever fluid is flowing, you can get that rate because uh, at, at each pump cycle, you're already accounting for compressibility. So here you can see uh, 5 cc per second translates to less than 1 cc per second effectively. Right, so this is something which we should be aware of. What rate are we talking about? Now, this is an example uh, of um, oil based mud and gas. And this is the oil industry's first job in carbonate total losses pressurized mud cap drilling scenario. And it has been done in Sarawak, Malaysia. So there is an EAG 39 paper, so one can read it. And what I've uh, I've just shown some important points of it. So this is actually a comparison of contamination between different sample sources. OK, so the first two is FSWD sample and then the next one are the open hole wireline samples. So basically when the situation went into total losses, two gas samples were taken. Uh, the laboratory contamination showed between one and three percent contamination. Uh, this was a floater rig, so the bit was on the bottom. So that's very brave, but the operator did it. And uh, why we could seal in this kind of situation? Many times when these sections are drilled with the PDC bit, uh, the cuttings that it produces, like it's like flour, you know, that itself acts as your mud cake many times. But uh, in complete total loss, uh, that also doesn't help. Uh, so what you need is some innovation in the mud recipe itself, which this operator did. And they also, uh, they spotted that pill uh, across that zone of interest. And uh, 
there's something called a soaking time. So you have to wait. So on this job, I was there real time. Uh, we waited for like close to an hour. So just allowed it to soak. And we could see that uh, it helped build some kind of mud cake. So at least we have a seal with the probe. You know, so this thing has happened in Malaysia. And you see uh, what happened is they drilled a side track. Fortunately, the side track did not have uh, any losses. So they could go with the traditional wireline samples and uh, then they compared uh, the original uh, FSWD samples with the wireline. So it's, I think, uh, a very good comparison. The uh, sampling while drilling samples are very much consistent with the wireline samples. It's the same reservoir. Uh, so that adds to our confidence, you know, adds to your confidence that, yes, this works. OK, then we come to another uh, example like the downhole chromatograph. Uh, please zoom in individually if you don't see it. Uh, but uh, what we really have is, you know, C1, C2, C3, uh, C4, C5, C6. That's the left hand side. And the yellowish one, greenish one is uh, basically uh, CO2 comparison. And these are real time versus laboratory comparisons from an OTC paper. So here you can see uh, it is uh, it is a, a, a very reasonable to reasonably good match. Uh, so uh, basically uh, it's it's uh, it's a good application just like in wireline. Then we come to the key pointers. You know? uh, so we are we are coming to the end of the show. <laughs> And uh, so basically, what are the key pointers? What we need to know is, OK, high quality sampling is possible. Uh, we can achieve less than 2%, even lower, but uh, we have achieved ultra low contamination sampling. Uh, it's better to always sample early to reduce the cleanup time. At least that should be the governing reason uh, to try it. Then uh, you will have very reduced or almost no tools sticking for sure because uh, the pumps are on and uh, there are examples where you have 3000 PSI plus over balance and uh, the uh, tools are there in the hole for more than 20 hours of cleanup in a deep water scenario and uh, there is no problem about tool sticking. Then um, what about the packer seal? So you have a reamed hole, unconsolidated formation, abrasive formation. So there are multiple examples where uh, the sealing efficiency is very high. So uh, obviously what happens is uh, the packer, there is a sensor which senses the sealing pressure and it provides a continuous input to the tool that, okay, if the pressure, sealing pressure goes beyond a certain limiting value, it will automatically recharge the packer. In wireline, we have seen engineers do it. You know, sometimes you have to stop because the engineer says, uh, let's hold on for two minutes. I need to recharge the packer. Uh, you don't want this during a buildup or you don't want this during a cleanup when you're about to sample. So basically, uh, engineers will always ensure that before we begin a station, uh, they will recharge. Here, it is done automatically to have the least amount of delay or interference in your operation. And then uh, ultimately, if all is successful, you have cost savings in rig days. And another aspect is uh, you will have a timely well completion and you need to mobilize only the required completion equipment, not the entire thing. Uh, as in my experience, I've seen in uh, some of the marginal uh, field jobs in Vietnam, like uh, they didn't need to mobilize tons of stuff. It was only the required stuff which is uh, very much essential for a marginal field. You know, it impacts their operations hugely. Then uh, coming to wireline. So obviously wireline is still preferred uh, where you have a very intense wireline program and you have focus sampling and stuff. It will always be preferred. Carbonate with pressurized PMCD situations, uh, well, Today, many operators with the help of QI, uh, they are trying to release locations where uh, predictively 
there is going to be no losses. So that's one aspect. That's that's a study aspect and locations are released based on the help from QI. But even with that best uh, prediction, you might end up in uh, total losses condition and that's your best reservoir where frankly, that's your best location actually. So um, uh, at best, if you're not going for sampling while drilling, uh, people end up using FPWD and then hope that the side track will not have mud losses. So uh, this is a decision uh, point where if this technology is available, uh, it's been proven, then why not use it actually? And uh, obviously, the preference is given to this technology in many examples where you have horizontal to near horizontal wells, ERD wells, uh, unstable boreholes, sticky boreholes, uh, deviated S profile wells, highly deviated S profile wells. Uh, and then those uh, situations like, you know, like even if you have tough logging conditions or pipe conveyed logging, uh, you still have that fear that I, I don't want to do wireline. So that is exactly the case where you can use this uh, technology. And uh, basically this is the last slide. Uh, so it's like future re requirements, expectations, so wish list, you know. So uh, obviously we need tools for 12 quarter and six inch hole sizes like standard tools. You need high temperature tools because traditionally wireline goes very high, but not LWD. And uh, you need the flexibility, redundancy type of environment where I should be able to have more than one probe or packer in the tool string, just like we have in wireline. Because with this, uh, I can also do a vertical interference test, uh, which we can do in wireline. So uh, if wireline and LWD develop in tandem in terms of this, it will be of immense help to the industry. Uh, focus sampling capability, yes. Uh, on, a, on a test bed, this works on LWD. It's just not out in this world where somebody has to try it, you know, a, a prototype has to be tried upon. Uh, yeah, specific scenarios where pump down helps. Uh, yeah, we need to do that. And uh, another aspect not exactly related to fluid sampling, but rock sampling is sidewall coring uh, with sampling while drilling. Uh, I have read that um, the patent exists for this. So uh, you have sidewall cores in an LWD environment and uh, maybe it's a good way to have these uh, where you're going to uh, sample or where you're not going to sample. So just like our traditional sidewall cores in wireline. So basically in terms of future really is uh, what I have understood is um, we are at a we are at a stage where uh, things are there in front of you. I think it is up to the operators to adopt to this and um, uh, there are enough examples uh, to help them adapt to this. And once that adoption uh, exceeds a certain critical limit, then uh, the technology provider can invest more and develop it uh, even more. Uh, so that is really the future. Uh, there are applications going on globally, but uh, unfortunately it is not at the scale where it was expected. So that that is that is my true wish list actually in terms of this uh, domain. Uh, so with that, uh, I um, I end the slideshow and um, we are open for Q and A. I believe um, Ross. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Nikhil, uh, for the very informative presentation. I see a lot of claps um, all around. Um, while we are still here, there are like 115 of us. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to lose uh, all of you. Is it possible for um, all of you participants who are here today to turn on your camera so that we can take a quick group photos? Uh, the reason being is um, as part of of the organization, we have to report back to SPEKL. <laughs> if uh, 
<coughs> so if if we had a, a very good attendance, we got a report back to our chairperson and maybe we can have a uh, offer more interesting prizes in the next session. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, honey, can you take start taking the pictures? Honey, are you taking the picture? Are you muted? Well, there's also <clears throat> someone showing to Volkswagen car. I like the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henry. <laughs> <clears throat> Samara, Encik Pais, Anas. Hello, Kyo. Hello. Hey, this is Kyo from China. Hi, yeah. hi. Yeah. Hey, Kai, how are nice you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm good. Um, so today I'm uh, I'm going to fly to uh, Zhangjiang for an offshore job. Yeah. I okay. Be safe. Nice. All the best. <laughs> Thank you very much. All the best. Okay. Uh, Faiz, can you take photo, please? Are we going to do it in a uh, together mode? Together mode satu. Ah, okay, tolong Faiz. Oh. Oh, Fami ada, Iswan ada. Ada, ada. Okay, any freestyle? Thumbs up. Count it, count it. <laughs> keep smiling, keep smiling. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I was on mute, right? I mean, mentioned about uh, on my screen now, every uh, stage. Don't worry, please give your best smile and I will take the photo one more time. One, two, three. Right. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Back to you, Rose. All right, thank you for ease and thank everyone for staying put. So now let's go quickly through our um, Q&A. All right. Um, OK, uh, will this session be made available to download as was told by uh, Honey? If you are a SPEKL membership, we will uh, we will we will share the session later on uh, via our informs mailing list. But you have to choose, you have to join and choose Kuala Lumpur as your section. Um, otherwise, we'll try to see how to share with uh, our participant from overseas. Um, probably uh, we can share it via our Google Google Cloud Drive. OK, and then the first question is um, calculation for CO2. How, how reliable is your CO2 and H2S uh, calculation? OK, uh, yeah, nice one. Uh, so basically, uh, H2S, uh, right now, uh, there is no um, uh, quantification. There is only qualitative indicators. Uh, but for the carbon dioxide, uh, I believe uh, we have papers that have shown uh, plus minus 10% error. At times, you have more error, but uh, many times it is as uh, low as plus minus 10%. Uh, so uh, that is in my reading. That is what uh, I have observed. Uh, maybe there is even uh, you know lesser percentage, but I believe in in general, uh, in terms of like compositional or CO two, uh, you can say that it is uh, less than uh, plus minus ten percent. Okay, thank you. Does the current technology already use in situ um, IFA compositional compositional analyzer? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Okay. Uh, do you have a successful case study for running FSWD in total losses condition in carbonate wells? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that uh, slide which I showed, uh, basically that's that's the one, and that's in Malaysia, in uh, Sarawak. Uh, so if you have noted down that SPE paper, 
if not, let me just tell you the, the number. It is um, EAGE 39. So we have we have a published uh, case of that. OK, I hope um, Anas take, take, uh, take note of that. EGE 39. That's yeah, it. EGE 39. That's OK. It. All right. Um, from Mr. Go Chun Ki, any comparison between market service providers in terms of their technology? Oh, this is a good question. You mentioned oh, uh, three I, I mean, bakers. <laughs> Uh, I have uh, lots of material on that, but uh, uh, currently, as uh, uh, I have not included that, uh, you know, as as my disclaimer said at the start that, you know, uh, I'm not going to point out uh, what a particular uh, one has or a particular one doesn't have, but uh, you can use this set of slides to actually ask the question to uh, each of the providers that, OK, uh, this is a checklist. Uh, what do you have from this? Uh, and do tell me if I've missed out on anything as well. <laughs> but you have experience working with all three service providers, right? Am I right? Uh, Nikhil? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you have I, have, uh, I mean, uh, uh, not in LWD, but uh, when I was with the operator, um, I um, uh, I had I had the the experience of working with different um, uh, service providers, uh, and then I joined one of the service providers. So yeah, I mean I have I have uh, kind of experience with uh, almost all of them. Yes. <laughs> all right, staying independent, staying natural, <laughs> neutral. Sorry, staying neutral. That's fine. OK, and from uh, Siti Najmi Farhan, <clears throat> any latest innovation to date which enables continuous measurement of CO2 top to bottom of well using this FSWD tool? Ah, uh, well, that is something which uh, uh, I don't think we will um, we will get there because uh, you already have mud logging and from there that's the only continuous uh, top to bottom of the well or bottom to top of the well that uh, has happened because uh, for for uh, to do this with the fluid uh, you will have to put your probe continuously uh, you know uh, with the formation so you have to uh, you have to eject and um, you have to hold it against the formation which is which is not going to be possible unless you do this every 0.1 meter or you know just like in wireline just take shot after shot after shot and uh, you have to clean up and actually see the CO2 profile of the formation fluid and then that's one way, but I don't think that's very practical. OK, uh, thank you, Nikhil. I think I did not see um, any more question uh, due to our time constraint. Uh -huh. Do you suggest that we uh, we go straight to Kahoot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, all right, give me give me some time to set up the games for um, everyone else. Uh, please, please uh, participate in this Kahoot game. It, it will be fun. It will be uh, now Nikhil has prepared 15 questions, right? It'll be easy. Don't worry. Uh, there will be prizes in the end. So let me just set up the Kahoot uh, right now. What's the expert level, uh, Nikhil, in order to answer those? Ah, <laughs> be beginner, beginner, beginner. Beginner, okay, okay. <laughs> try. <laughs> so everyone uh, can see the my screen. Yes. All right. Um, yes. OK, that's nice. OK, so the Kahoot is the Kahoot game is 430107. Just a little note here, we pay for um, we recently purchased a premium account for Kahoot, so they, that's why we can accept up to 100 participants.
we have 16, no, 30. Increasing. So the pin is four three zero one zero seven. If you didn't get cash voucher is up. For grab, courtesy of Samarat Training. Come on, guys. We got Jaja Bings. We got. Nasi goreng, we got new entrant, we got trailer. Yeah, we have packer. <laughs> we got durian. We got durian. <laughs> <laughs> Just to remind you before we start, the winner for this session, please stay on to provide your details. Or if you have to leave early, please email spe at spengieers.kl at gmail.com. Perfect. We have 50 participants, Ross. Okay. Um, we can actually cater for 100. But do you want to wait up or we want to start? What do you think, Nikhil? Join. I think, oh, there's some people are asking how to join. Hang on. Um, I think to join. You can type kahoot.it. Okay, uh, kahoot.it and put the game code, which is 430107. Okay, can we start, Nikhil? Yep. All right. Uh, I guess you can hear the music, right? Yeah. All right. Awesome. So we have Goku, MCO, Lafa. I'm sorry, I understand. All right. Get ready, guys. Sampling while drilling technology was introduced to our industry as early as we have 22nd 
voice question. People got it right? Very nice. Okay. <laughs> Come. Is yeah. our first winner? True or false? Currently, the technology caters to six inch hole size. Oh no. <laughs> I guess a lot of people missed the beginning of the lecture. This comes <laughs> very early on. Never mind. All right. We see the same leaderboard. leaderboard sorry. Uh, next question. The technology currently can service 12 and a quarter inch hole size. Most people got it right. Yes, yeah. but under special condition. Uh huh. Come again. Is that you, Nikki? No, no. <laughs> I am. I have not joined. <laughs> <laughs> Simply can be performed with a flow of yes or no. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, we have SPE. Wow. <laughs> Fluid analyzer before pumps enables early detection of saturation pressure or slug load notification. People get it right. Early detection of saturation pressure. Yeah. Congratulations, SPE. Mm -hmm. Fluid analyzer after pump enables. This should oh, be. This a, yeah, this is this is a, yeah. a repeat question. Hopefully, a bonus. yeah, we should see hundred percent result. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> the fluorescent spectrometer uses UV light or white light. UV light. Okay, great. <clears throat> True or false? The reciprocal of GUR is CGR. Okay, let's go. Um, we are halfway through. Downhole mud filter contamination estimation is based on total reservoir fluid or flash reservoir fluid. So is to the reservoir fluid. Yeah. Next. 
Question 10. The speed of sound is higher in liquid than gas. So fluid slowness is higher in gas than liquid or slower in gas than liquid. So it's uh, higher in gas than liquid. We have a new winner, Franklin. Mm -hmm. A downhole chromatograph provides following computation. Select the correct. C1 to C6 plus CO2, and then we have H2S, mercury. It's pretty challenging. We got 25% got, got the correct answer. Right. True or false, the lower the drilling mud API, high temperature, high pressure fluid loss, the lower the supercharging. I think most people got it correct. False. Currently, the technology can be run in palm down mode. False. Okay. New entrant has just made a new entrant. True or false, a downhole phase separation test is possible using this technology. Okay, correct. 38 people got to answer correct. Next. So the last question. Yes. A large something probe is more suited to low mobility formation. All right, 21 people got the answer right. So let's see who's the winner. Curry puff. Nice. Come on, second place. Okay. And first place. Wow. W A. Okay. <laughs> w A. Wow, curry puff. <laughs> All right. Stop sharing. Okay, thank you very much all for participating and congratulations to Wa. Um, I would suggest Wa to um, stay on or put in the chat uh, of your details. Um, I would now pass um, the presentation or the session to Mr. Faiz from Samara Training, who is um, uh, sponsoring today's uh, prize. Prizes, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Wow. It was fun, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Assalamualaikum and a very, very good afternoon. My name is Faiz Latif from uh, Smart Training, a Malaysia's energy industry training provider. I hope if you have enjoyed our fun Kahoot games. Yeah. Thank you so much for your participation. As uh, to the winners, congratulations. And uh, for winning prize, the lucky number one winner, Wa, right? We will find out who while later on will receive our M50 ringgit, which will be directly transferred to your Touch and Go mobile account very soon. Congratulations again, Wa, and please stay back after this session, and we'll, we'll finally transfer that dollar ringgit to, to your account. To those who are not lucky yet, I have a good news for you because you still get a chance to win the prize, as there will be nine more interesting technical talks on every Wednesday starting next week. For this session, we hope you have enjoyed it and it has been beneficial for you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Smart Training is honored to be a part of this session. And please allow me to ask for three moments, just three minutes of your time to briefly introduce you with our organization. Personally, um, the title of this event, as you can see here, Members in Transition, is very, very close to me. Right? I, my career started well, uh, where I started with Becky Hughes as a wildland field engineer before my graduation day. Then global oil price crisis hit in 2014, left 76 of my colleagues jobless. At least for me, I was a member in transition myself for um, one year and three months, right? But uh, one door closed and another door opened for me. I'm very, very grateful. Since 2017, I'd get back to industry and get involved in professional training business. Now, if you are an engineer, you know that you are trained to solve problems, right? So same goes to me. Since then, together with my team, we continue to innovate and improvise to try to solve two problems. Number one, how can we make world-class training solutions of energy industry more accessible and affordable in Malaysia? And secondly, how can we empower performance of much, much more energy industry professionals in a faster speed? Thus, I would like to introduce you to our solutions, which we call as Smart Training. Straight away to the point, right? I want to show you where you can find us so that for more details, because I know everybody is hungry at the moment, right? I don't intend to take your time, but for your information, Smart Art Training is a Malaysian startup, right? Specialized in providing world-class training solution for professional, professional and organizations of energy industry in Malaysia to empower performance. We are registered HIDF and Pet, HIDF registered training provider and a licensed company by Petronas, member with Training Industry and Energy Institute, and we are proud 100% Malaysian company. As you can see, there are a lot of white, red, red colors over here, here and there, right? And for information, we offer the training solution in oil and gas from basic to advanced and not to forget the soft skill part on the business and a very, very important the key on the HSE as well and helping the organization in energy industry to transform digitally where we offer data analytics, big data and cybersecurity trainings and also to be ready in the energy transition, we offer solar energy uh, trainings as well for professional organization, right? And for your information, we have over 150 professional courses. Please feel free when you got time, get into our website to, to, to browse through and find if there is any relevant and really beneficial uh, courses for yourself. And good news is that we are deploying not only for a face-to-face -face training, but we also there for e-learning courses live online, just like today is online. Nikhil is teaching us the session. And also we do have hopefully one day after all vaccinated, we get back to face-to-face -to -face public training. And of course, we offer our clients with an in-house training solution as well. Tomorrow is July. It's special July. 10% off for e-learning of upstream oil and gas courses. We have 70 courses. Please feel free to get to our website and get your, your, your discount and uh, find out that we have uh, courses uh, based on the UK um, stringent uh, standards over there. And uh, please, everyone, I really invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to follow us Samara Training at LinkedIn and Facebook for future updates. With that, ladies and gentlemen, next one, right? We promise you back-to-back -back technical talks and uh, there will be nine more. And starting next week, we'll have Fatima Mehran, who will be presenting artificial lift method and its importance in production engineering. Same time, same day, right? But different dates is 7 July 2021. Please feel free to scan to join with Microsoft Teams and follow follow the LinkedIn page of SPE Kuala Lumpur section because over there, SPE will always update the next uh, events that we are going to do for our community. With that, thank you and take care and please stay safe everyone. Hope to see you around. And goodbye for now. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, thank you. SPL. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, can can we have Wa uh, to stay on? And um, can can we have Wa on your telephone number? <laughs> yes, sure. Um. Uh -huh. I would type in the chat what? box. The chat. Yeah. Um, oh, there you are. Okay. Ah, congratulations, Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are okay. Um. What's difficult questions? <laughs> yes. You have an option, either grab or um. 
touch and go? Uh, I, I think touch and go is okay. Yeah. Touch and go, okay. Zero one six seven seven six zero five one seven. Yeah. Wait, wait. Are you are you a member of SP? Yes, I am. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thank you. We will be sending you um the voucher soon today. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much for the All session. Right. All right. Have oh. a nice day. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Nikhil. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Nikhil. Well done. Well done. Yeah, well done, Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for East. Well Thank done. you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good lunch. Bye. 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 Bye.